Welcome back to Strange Form. This episode is brought to you by the Military Armament Research Syndicate and of course, HasLab. Yep, you guessed it. We are going to be looking at Hasbro's impressive crowdfunded Hiss tank. And soon after, we will also be looking at the Cobra 788th Fire Team. Sorry these two episodes are a bit late. Two root canals and a bout with COVID have taken me out of the running for the last month and a half and caused me to lose my voice for the better part of the last month. But now, with two new crowns and a negative COVID test, let's finally get into this giant cobra tank. Now I'm going to be completely forthright with you. I didn't pre-order this awesome vehicle, as at the time of its campaign I didn't have the funds and wasn't yet certain I wanted to jump into the wonderful world of G.I. Joe Classified. It was the Dragonfly campaign that actually finally convinced me to take the plunge. And since then, I've sold a ton of collectibles in order to bring this line to you. But I never would have been able to get my hands on the Hiss if it weren't for an awesome local collector over at the Hiss Tank forums who was willing to part with one of the two he had ordered. To you, my friend, thanks again. This thing is definitely a crown jewel in the lineup. This collector also walked me through an amazing assortment of European Action Force versions of the many toys I had as a child, and one I've actually never seen before, which was a sort of red skull TIE fighter looking thing called the Robo Skull. Definitely one we missed out on here in the States. The HISS acronym stands for High Speed Sentry, which is only three words, but who's counting? Apart from the vehicle details, on the bottom we have four anime looking panels, which to me sort of are reminiscent of the old Captain Power interactive animated videos. The fire team packaging matches this one really well, which we'll be looking at in the next episode. On the top you have the words Semper Fidelis Cobra Serpents, which translates from Latin to Always Faithful Serpents a play on the United States Marine Corps motto, which actually goes back to the original 80s toy line. I've never quite been certain if this is disrespectful or not, as this is the villain. Inside we have two boxes, which I'm assuming this thinner box houses the figures. There's a nice little pull tab which makes unboxing it easier, and a surprisingly crisp Cobra logo on top. Inside we have the instruction booklet and stickers, and of course the legal material. And below the tissue paper we have the figures, which are actually out of order being 199 and 101, as well as the retro card back Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander. To anybody wondering if Ron's signature here is real, unfortunately it's not, but the included signature and representation of his art makes for great 100th figure packaging, as he is one of the most famous character designers for the series. The three boxes are extremely similar, and gel with both the Hiss box and the fire team set. I don't necessarily agree with making limited figures part of the numeric checklist, but it is what it is. I will touch more on that later. The Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander, named thus because of the way the logo was stamped on the original, recreates the aesthetic of the 80s release. However, I won't be unboxing this one until I start going through the retro card back line. I will say that he comes with six sets of hands, two fists, two weapons holding hands, and one pointing figure and one open palm hand to hold the cobra coiled globe. This cobra commander also comes with a sheath and knife and aforementioned globe, as well as a pistol and backpack holster. Now onto the main event. The second box has a rather striking cobra hiss logo. Inside, on the top we have four sets of tank wheel armor in both the classic and modern design, the retro and modern windshields, and a bag with the under cockpit cannons. On the second tray, we have the titular vehicle, i.e. the tank itself, which is actually shockingly heavy. I mean, not far from Hot Toys DeLorean heavy. This thing is definitely, well, a tank. Also inside, we have the right and left missile racks, the top double Diablo cannons, and the turret-mounted Gatling guns, as well as forward shield. And below that, an empty box. I expected the vehicle to be large, but am definitely pleasantly surprised as to how intricate and robust the entire thing feels. I hope this is the kind of quality and attention to detail we will be seeing with future vehicle releases, such as the Vamp. In fact, there's so much that went into this one, I highly doubt that they will simply chuck the design. My guess is that we are either going to see a blue version in the near future, or possibly a red version. Interestingly enough, the instruction booklet leaves out one hidden detail that I will expose later. I will say that I love the fact that this one feels slightly like a model, which was one of the most satisfying parts about the unboxing of the 80s vehicles, and with a sticker sheet to boot. I'm not sure if I'm going to apply any of these, but it's definitely an awesome choice to have. 
The first thing that is plainly obvious about this is that there are fine fit and finish details everywhere. The battery compartment is well hidden on the bottom. The tank treads are completely functional. There is an incredible amount of detail in the cockpit, and they even went as far as to make functional hatch covers for the optional missile system. So if you don't want to display the missile racks, you don't have to just have a big peg hole on the side. On the back, we have the pull-down ramp that looks into the troop and equipment carrier. It is strange that there are several rails for seats, yet there's only one chair, but we will look into this area in more detail later. For now, let's start building this beast. Starting with the Malhis missile racks, each and every missile is detachable, but they did miss an opportunity to give us firing effects. The detail and paint applications on these are really sharp though, and accurate. To place them, just flip up the lid and the missile racks peg easily into the aforementioned missile arm receptacle. Once in, the arms can telescope out and rock back and forth at the joint. And when you rock the arm back and forth, there are rigid stages which allow for the rack to stay in position without drifting. We can see that we have a pull-down flip-up trailer hitch for future accessories such as the missile trailer. The interior can easily carry two figures, but only if one wants to sit on the floor. The weapons racks are a nice touch. I would like to have seen a computer screen in front of the tactician's chair, but it's also not a part that's going to get displayed that often, so in the end I'm just happy they included any detail at all. On the sides we also have pull-down ladders for positioning even more figures on the outside of the vehicle. Next we have the double Diablo cannons. Again, no blast or firing effects, which is a shame, because the barrel holes are not standard to any of the effects previously released. These also have a heavy ratchet to them, to help keep them in position wherever your gunner is aiming. The paint applications towards the muzzle have a nice gradient in the way that real metal does when exposed to high heat. Next up we have the alternate cockpit windshields. One has DeLorean style winged entry with flashy red accents which is definitely the cooler of the two, but it is nice to have the option of building this thing out like its original 80s counterpart. If this thing does get another release, I wonder if it will come with all of the extra accessories like the missile racks and extra windshields, or if it will be more scaled down. I will say that if they do release the blue version, I will probably display it closer to the 80s counterpart because that's the version I had as a kid. I did have a few friends who had the black version, but I was a little later to the game. Speaking of retro design aesthetics, we have the original wheel shielding, which as you can see, exposes more of the forward two tank wheels than the new design. Interestingly enough, the part number stamped on the side is unique to both designs. And you can see here, with the shielding off, how the tank treads actually work, as in the wheels are not static decoration parts. Every wheel catches the tread and moves independently. Next we have the modern wheel shielding, which again is by far my favorite. I'm definitely planning on displaying this one with all of the modern bells and whistles, but if they do release another, I might be persuaded to have a retro version as well. The detail applications are clean and the addition of extra stickers, in case you want to change yours up a bit, is definitely welcome. And like I said before, there's a secret addition to the detail found around this thing. Another new addition is the Hisruptor ZX-5 blasters, which each come with detachable ammo canisters and rotatable barrels. These also have barrel holes that fit both the G.I. Joe and Action Force blast effects. Now after seeing this, and probably getting it in your own hands, you'll have to let me know, is this something that you'd like to see more of in the line? With the Vanguard coming from the Action Force line, and the Vamp and Dragonfly just around the corner, do you think that giant 112 scale vehicles are going to become a staple part of the collectible market, or do you think that their size and price are going to make them a more rare specialty item. I honestly think that fans have been waiting for their favorite vehicles from the beginning of the line. I don't think that we are going to see a 112 scale USS flag anytime soon, but I do get the feeling that we are going to see at least one or two large vehicles per year as the classified series matures. Here we also have an optional shield cover to protect the gunner. I do wish there were some sort of targeting decals on the reverse side, but it's not a huge issue. The gunner turret is well crafted and easy to position, as it's a free floating design that can simply be lifted out of the main body cavity without catching on anything, which makes me wonder if there were, or maybe still are, any plans to have an alternate missile system or other weapon system similar to the Vanguard. Heck, looking at the size comparison, I wonder if the Vanguard's missile turret, which is sold separately, fits this one. I guess we'll have to wait and see. 
Underneath, we have the twin Hisintegrator cannons, which affix and come off easily depending on your display preferences. These both rotate and swivel, but again, have mismatched barrel shapes for any of the previously released blast effects. I know I say it in every video, but Hasbro, you need to start releasing accessory packs. I love the design of the underside cannons. They look like something right out of Cyberdyne systems, and complete the aggressive Swiss Army knife look of this beast. On a side note, one thing I have had difficulty with is keeping dust off of this thing, as it is really smooth plastic and it was shipped with a fairly staticky cling wrap, which just made the whole thing a dust magnet for every tiny piece of lint or dust floating through the air. As a matter of fact, between almost every take, I was hitting the whole tank with a feather duster and a microfiber cloth so it didn't look like it was fighting a losing war with the dryer lint trap. Now with everything built, let's give this thing a crew, shall we? Starting with G.I. Joe Classified number 99, the classic Hiss Driver. So with these new releases, we are seeing the last of the plastic-free packaging, with Mutton Junkyard being the first of the renewed window box designs. That being said, it would seem that they have been phasing in plastic slowly over the last month and a half, as seen here with these plastic tie-downs, rather than the corded paper ones we were seeing. The figure itself is about as well-crafted as you come to expect from the line. The paint applications are crisp and fine, and the fit and finish is great, but this is also a particularly simple character design, so on this one there really aren't any complex parts or paint applications. Since the articulation is identical in all three tank operators, I'm only going to go through this once. You have the classic double joint at the knees, the pivot roll and hinge joints at the feet, the double ball joints at the hips, as well as a swivel joint at the upper thigh, a swivel joint at the biceps, another double joint at the elbow, and a hinge and pivot joint at the wrist. Again, we have the classic two-stage neck and foldable midsection, as well as the rotatable hips, and lastly, the two-stage shoulders. Like I said before, the articulation is identical on the next two, with the tactician just being this figure with a different paint scheme. Now, I'm telling you, I am definitely going to be missing the accessory crates. I know that mint-on card collectors want packaging that allows for them to display the figures without opening them. But personally, I found this style of unboxing to be far more satisfying. Inside the accessory pack, we have the driver's Chris Vector-esque rifle, a pair of what looks like boxing hands, and a Glock-looking handgun with a red dot sight, along with having a cool-looking bayonet. One of the great things about this little carbine is the removal magazine, and unlike the Chris, this thing looks like it takes some seriously large ammunition, 308 possibly, as the magazine is thicker than what comes with the classifieds 556 rifles. Is driver character stats. Roll. Tanker level 3. Gear. Light weapons level 1. Skill and mastery. Strength level 2. Skill and mastery. Urban combat level 2. Originally released in 1983, the Cobra Hiss Driver was exclusively packaged with the Hiss Tank, which was part of the second series lineup. His file card read, Cobra Hiss Drivers are selected from the best and most evil of Cobra Command's thousands of yearly recruits. Each is chosen for his physical strength and total dedication to evil. Hiss Drivers are graduates of the Cobra Battle School Advanced Weapon System Training, qualified experts. Hiss Vehicle, Fangcopter, knowledge of all NATO and G.I. Joe weapons. Cobra Hiss drivers are committed to the destruction of G.I. Joe, and this newly developed battle vehicle is a real match for the G.I. Joe team. Beware. Again, though he's not the most detailed figure in the classified line, from the paint scheme to the costume details, he is one of the most true to the original 80s releases. Classified 100, Cobra Hiss Tactician. The 100th figure or if you count 00 and the five variants from the first wave, this is technically the 106th figure the classified line has released. And in true Hasbro fashion, it's a repaint. Identical to the Hiss driver in every aspect except the paint scheme, including the accessories, the Hiss tactician represents the staying power of the G.I. Joe classified line. Though this is only a repaint, 
The paint applications are sharp, with both glossy and flat black applications to break up the design, and well-placed red accents. All told, this is nothing to write home about, largely because it's identical to the other figure, and Hasbro did miss an opportunity to throw in some different accessories, like a headset or communications devices, as he is the tactician. But what's special about him is that Hasbro has brought us 100 figures, and the line doesn't seem to be slowing. But again, there's no reason to go through the articulation, as it's identical to the driver. However, like I said, it's a fun figure, not what I would expect for their landmark 100th offering, but great nonetheless. As for those accessories, they are the same as was found with the previous figure, but with red accents. You have the SBR, as well as the handgun and boxing hands. His Tactician Character Stats Roll Tanker, Level 3 Gear Light Weapons, Level 1 Skill and Mastery Leader, Level 2 Skill and Mastery Urban Combat Level 2. Since there is literally nothing new to say about this guy, I will use this time to talk about how Hasbro has hurt their own line by making their 100th figure one you have to have ordered more than a year in advance, really before the Classified series started to even find its fan base. Now I know that there are quite a few of these currently on eBay, but it's the principle that bugs me. I just don't think that they should be roping their numbered releases in with the HasLab exclusives. In my opinion, the HasLab vehicles should be something above and beyond the normal lineup. And honestly, I think that the company is leaving money on the table not doing short re-release runs of their more popular HasLab presentations. Hasbro is currently so caught up in trying to create a sense of FOMO that they don't seem to realize that turning extremely popular HasLab releases into re-releases won't hurt the initial offering because the people won't know how popular one of these is going to be until it's backed. Classified 101 Though she is basically a female version of the driver, here we get a different sculpt and quite a few accessories. This figure is decidedly more svelte and smaller than the tactician or the driver, and also sports a different face mask. Though they have her tagged as the gunner, because of her more petite size, I will probably be putting her in the tactician seat. I also think that a gunner exposed in an open turret design probably wouldn't be wearing bright red, and would more likely be outfitted in darker or more neutral colors, like the tactician, so he just makes more sense to me in that position. The design of this figure is very similar to the Valkyries, and comes with a plethora of interesting accessories, such as one of the better classified shotgun designs, with an intricately detailed drum magazine that's reminiscent of some of the stuff Gridiron Studios is putting out. It still suffers a bit from being made of softer plastic, but is definitely moving in the right direction. We also have the same vector-looking weapon found with the other two, in the same color scheme as the driver. We have a nice battle hammer pickaxe combo, and a tactical shovel, so not a bad loadout with this one. Lastly, we have a smaller pair of the boxing hands and the same pistol as found with the previous two. Hiss Gunner, character stats. Roll, Marksman, level two. Gear, heavy weapons, level two. Skill and mastery, strength, level two. Skill and mastery, urban combat, level two. Like I said before, I wish every one of these figures came with at least two specialized accessories, like a headset or laptop for the tactician, or some tools for the driver. But they're all still pretty cool, and not at all a terrible crew for Hasbro's first classified HasLab. I do wonder if these figures are going to get a repaint re-release down the line. What do you guys think? Is it a betrayal of the collector community to re-release a HasLab in a different color scheme or different loadout? Would you like to see Hasbro revisit figures 99, 100, and 101 with a standard release? Or should this just be part of the you snooze, you lose culture of modern collecting. Personally, I think engineering collectability is too far towards the forefront of most toy companies' to-do lists these days, and I really dislike the fact that people are still trying to get their hands on figures like the eel. If Hasbro does continue their campaign of engineering scarcity, I think that it's going to cause a lot of burnout. In my opinion, 2024 is probably going to be the year that either makes or breaks the classified line. But these are a great looking group. And with the fire team already here, and the Techno Viper SMS set just around the corner, the Hiss is definitely shaping up to be the center display piece of the entire classified lineup. 
Now let's power this thing up. The battery compartment is found on the undercarriage towards the back. The battery compartment doors are held on by a single Phillips head screw that isn't recessed so you don't need a long neck screwdriver. To provide power, the vehicle takes three AA batteries, which aren't included. With everything in place, you can operate the lights via a large button on the underside of the cockpit. If you're wondering what the sticker on the underside of the Hiss is, it reads, Warning. Secure canopy and hatches, and remove weapons and ammunition prior to lifting. Fuel level must be below 25% prior to transport. N-15596 Ensure all electrical systems are powered down and main brakes are engaged. The under button operates a 12-stage lighting system, which means 12 pushes of the button and you get 12 different lighting combinations, including the projected Cobra symbol, which works best on dark surfaces. As for the other lighting schemes, you'll see them showcased throughout the rest of this review, but they just mostly include several different forward headlight combinations. As well as headlights, the vehicle also has brake lights, cockpit and HUD lighting, as well as lighting the interior of the troop carrier compartment. As for the troop carrier compartment, my only complaint here is that it didn't come with a second foldable chair, as there is a rail to accommodate more seating. As a matter of fact, I wish it was just a bench. Also, it would have been nice if there were some computer screens or a workspace in there as well. But the space does allow for a bunch of weapon storage, as well as the housing of two figures. It's just that one has to sit on the floor. The red light makes everything look very clandestine and tactical. In the cockpit, the HUD is awesomely detailed. As a matter of fact, the entire cockpit is fairly incredible, with a seat belt and movable acceleration lever, as well as articulated steering joystick and several well-lit display screens. Hasbro most definitely delivered on this thing, and my verdict on it is that it probably is worth the $1 to $200 markup you're seeing on eBay. Like I said, the fit and finish are incredible, and the attention to detail is among the best I've seen in the classified line. With articulation everywhere, amazing light-up features, and a serious amount of extra extra hardware to play with, this is definitely the crown jewel of the classified line. If I had complaints, my main complaints would be that I think it could have used quite a few blast effects, i.e. for the missiles and miniguns, and the Diablo cannons. I would have liked to have seen an extra chair in the back, and a detailed workspace for the tactician, and lastly, some extra accessories for the sort of redundant crew. But not one of these complaints hurts what we did get. The vehicle that we had in our imagination when we were kids from the rolling tank treads to the crew carrier cavity, all the way to the lit up cockpit. This thing is pretty much everything I hoped it would be. And like I said before, there's a secret addition to all the detail found around this thing that's not included in the instruction booklet or on the box in that you can actually expose the engine by removing the neck cover behind the cockpit. Here you can see the engine and what looks like six ignition cables. So the fold down ladders on either side allow for you to display figures working on the engine as well as engaging in combat. These are the little extras that I really appreciate. So if you have this, did you find the engine, or is this the first time you're seeing it? Now, in the next episode, I'm going to explore how many figures can be positioned around this thing, as even though it doesn't have a lot of peg holes, it does have a lot of handrails, and it needs to accommodate the fire team. Though it was a long haul, I'm definitely pleased that Hasbro brought this thing to us. And to that collector who hooked me up, thanks again. This would have been a sad one to have missed out on. And I really appreciate you making this episode possible. Though I'm probably going to display mine with the new accessories such as the missile racks and new wheel coverings, as well as the DeLorean style flip up doors, there's something awesome about the fact that you can display this pared down to its original design. And that's what I'm going to go out on. Without all of the snazzy new bells and whistles, the hiss can be displayed in all of its 1980s glory, and I think that was an awesome choice the production team gave us. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of the gigantic hiss tank, and as always, remember, never stop collecting.